first off, congrats on the movie, guys. Oh, thank, thank you very uh, much. As I started with it, it's suitably terrifying and really, really enjoyed it. Uh, Lee, I wanted to ask you first, just of kind of tell us a little bit about the genesis and, and kind of what maybe influences kind yeah. of were behind you wanting to make this film. Yeah, the, the genesis was... Um, long it was it was a combination of things um both s some uh some real world stories that i'd encountered about sinkholes some being very personal actually just about you know, an individual being taken um underground by a sinkhole that uh, appeared underneath their feet like as if the carpet was the rug of life was pulled from beneath them um, and that kind of terrified me i think that that's the fact that it's real but also extraordinarily fantastical um and then i was playing around with this story idea about a mother and son and a mistrust that had built up between them and maybe trying to refine that trust. And then I loved the title, as simple as that. I just thought The Hole in the Ground was a big, brave title. It felt like a challenge, um, which is why there's such an enormous sinkhole in the film. It had to live up to the title. Um, and then in terms of influences, like horror for me is something that I experienced at a very young age, cinematically speaking. Um, and there's like a gap between me and my siblings of about nine years. Um, so when they were 14, 15, 16, you know, they had me watching Nightmare on Elm Street. They had me watching The Shining. They had me watching, I think I saw Jaws at six. My dad showed me Evil Dead and Evil mm. Dead 2 at like nine. Um, mm. And that just it, just, it just shapes your your kind of cinematic language and your, your the influence. It's kind of hard for me to escape. So I think, um, and I'm kind of proud of my influences. I, I would wear them uh, mm -hmm. such, you know. It's quite easy for me when I dig back in. I'm like, these are the 10 movies that inspire me and I don't need to look anywhere else. But um, yeah, so... Yeah, a lot of the classics also like you know Polanski's apartment trilogy is something I would I would look to the Wicker Man is phenomenal um, I think the best example of pure paranoia in a movie um, that pays off in such a horrific fashion so all of these little things would have would have fed into kind of my thinking but also just taking some Irish f folklore and just peppering it into what hopefully was going to be a very character driven yeah. uh, story and exploration of you know one woman's journey very singular POV you're talking about the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man now, I hope. Of course, yeah, the bees. It's all about the bees. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say, is there, this might just be me, is there a fly reference in there with the, the um, I, I wouldn't call it a reference. It was, it was, like, and I love that movie. It was an idea we came up with that felt perfect for the story. Upon reflection, we were like, oh, yeah, just that, you know, there's a scene a little bit like that in the fly. And I was like, okay, that's okay. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a starting point for, for the idea. Um, but yeah, I do, I do like that scene in the fly in question. I yeah. love all of the fly; it's amazing. Oh, it's uh, yeah. fantastic, Sean. For you, I mean, this is a physically demanding role. Did you know quite what you were getting into when you first signed on, or was it kind of laid out to you that if you're going to do this, this is what you're going to have to? Do? No, I think it was uh, pretty transparent that this is what I'd have to do, and um, except for being on the day, maybe little things added in. Yeah, of course. Um, but I know that's what one of the things that drew me to the part that I knew that was going to be really physical that I'd have to you know I'd get the opportunity to do more stunts and like that was very exciting to me and I kind of wanted to get um to get like muckied and dirtied up and like that was that was really appealing to me yeah I mean this is this 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 trope of you know the the, the kid and, and the mother and or father or whatever it's obviously so many movies but for you I mean was there a difficulty in trying to bring something fresh to the table which which I think you, you absolutely do but when you were writing it did you did you have to kind of put a lot of that out of your mind to yeah it's interesting um, when I was writing it I never really thought about the fact that it was a mother son and a creepy old house mm. it just felt like a place and a set of characters Tr truly that's kind of how I approached it when you when you reflect on it and you can kind of go okay fair enough we do have a creaky old house and we do have a creepy kid within the story um, and then in terms of the freshness, again, it's just it's just leaning into the instinct as much as possible and trying to find, it was always trying to make the decisions through the dread that Sarah's character would be experiencing. That's what led me down the pathways and trying to pull horror out of kind of domestic circumstance. Um, I remember we talked a lot with Stephen, who's the, the co-writer, we talked a lot about just <clears throat> what was real and what wasn't real. So, for example, that scene in question that you would reference the fly with, was it can be a very very normal thing. I think that's a prime example. Um, even though it's happening at a heightened moment for the character, because she's giving a, a kind of police interview about something she's experienced. But yeah, like um, it was. Yeah, we try. I guess we tried to be as fresh as we could because we trust in our own version of the ideas um, and tried to fun with it a little bit as well. Let me ask you about this this amazing kid. Uh, is it James? James. James. Yeah. I, I blanked for a second there. <clears throat> He's absolutely incredible in the movie. For you, what was it about him, and fi was there a long process in finding him? And for you, Sean, I can imagine that working with him was was a joy, but also seeing mm. that he was capable of so much 
uh, that he brings to, to the movie. You can begin. Yeah, I think a kid is always a good barometer of like <laughs> your own acting. You know, if they buy it, if they believe it. I remember one time he's like, we're not even doing anything in this scene. And I was like, uh... <laughs> okay it was like my close up or something it's like we're not even doing anything um, but he, he's amazing you know um, and I've said this before and I'll say it again he he brought like great a great atmosphere to the set everyone was like you know a little bit nicer a little bit calmer a little bit kinder you know so that they're all really positive things and uh, never once was he like not on form you know he was a little pro he was amazing the process was Kind of long in, 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 in finding him and detailed and making sure that he was he was right for the role and comparing him to like unlike we cast Sean, it was the only person we offered the role to and really the only person I actually met face to face. Um but yeah, we had to kind of dig in. But I kinda knew it's it's his flexibility and his adaptability. Like I would describe I've worked with a lot of young performers before and they've all been really great. And you tend to find they I would say they're a little bit like the dial on a cooker. There might be like six to eight settings. Mm. James is more like a... That's a new one. Yeah, ja yeah, yeah, ja ja cooker. yeah James is more like the, <laughs> you know, the, the lock on a safe. Um, you can you can ask him to give you like, you know, a little bit of six over here and go back over to eight. He's like, he's remarkably adaptable. Um, and there was so many points um, on that dial that you could you could direct him to. And he tended to get it, you know. Um, yeah. And like I... Like actors I like to work with is when you can just communicate with them simply mm. um, and then get what you kind of need from them. But yeah, he's <clears throat> he's a little star in you the making. You could see it sure. in him that he was just kind of taking it all in, you know, and then I'd kind of be like, did he get that? And next of all, we go for it. And like that, he'd go to six here and 12 there. You're like, whoa, he, like just in. Yeah, he'd take everything. And also like yeah. he was so, he learned the entire script. I think he even had the action <laughs> direction. <laughs> yeah, he's like, it says so, this. In the edit, we sometimes <laughs> would have to watch. We'd have to just cut him a little shorter than I'd want to because he'd start to mouth Shauna's lines ever so slightly <laughs> on his side. So That's Shauna, how I was learning my lines. I yeah. was like reading his yeah. mouth, staring intently. So intently. there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of just having to shave frames because his lips would be, you know, saying your lines at the same time. He had everything learnt off. Yeah. Fearless. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Completely fearless. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your Sundance experience because I'm, I'm a huge fan of Sundance and I will get over there one day to see mm -hmm. amazing films. There's so many, uh, such a great platform for, for so many movies, but we tend to see, you know, American indies and documentaries and everything else. What was it like taking a horror film out there did you did you get the reception you obviously got a great reception but did you get everything out of it that you, you wanted in terms of a, a platform yeah I think and, and a lot more mm. um, we keep on saying we'd no idea what the response would be until the kind of curtain went up on, on our on our premiere and since then I think it was actually a month ago yesterday yeah really? yeah it was a month oh ago God, yesterday the and quickest down. month yeah yeah and ever <laughs> yeah we haven't stopped like since it happened I think it's an it's an incredible platform. I, I, I'd never been before till we were there, so I really didn't know what to expect. Um, and you are thrust into the limelight quite roughly. You know what I mean? You're just you're just put there, and even our first bit of press work, you just have to show up, and suddenly you're you're talking about this film. <laughs> it's a real thing now. Um, <clears throat> so it was great, and I think from an industry point of view, um, it's serving both of us extremely well because of the doors and opportunities that it's open for us. You know, I'm a first time filmmaker, so that's really valuable for me. And Shauna has, you know, a great track record of work, but hopefully this film's given her a little bit more of an international platform than before. So it's really, it's really been positive for us and beyond us for, I think, a lot of people involved with the film as well. Yeah. And just finally, I wanted to ask you, I mean, obviously there's, there's Netflix and all this kind of stuff. How happy are you this is going to be shown in cinemas that it's going to get a release over here, and I presume in Ireland and, and yeah, other places as well. Yeah, hugely. The film was made for the big screen. That was, and I would always, even if I was making a film for Netflix, I would still make it for the big screen because that's the canvas that I kind of think on. So it was, uh, yeah, I'm really pleased. And we're getting, like, all the time I'm hearing of new theatrical markets that we're actually going to be opening. And so, like, right now we've got, you know, on the 1st of March, we've got the UK, we've got Ireland, we've got the US, like, Latin America, Russia, Middle East, like it's playing theatrically in a, a lot of places, and it's. I'm really pleased. I'm. It's, I was so pleased at the Irish premiere to see Shauna's face up on this enormous screen, just looming and dominating over the audience, mm. rather than people looking <laughs> at it on their iPhone. Um, yeah. I think this genre as well is built for like a like a collective sure. of people to watch it together to feel. You feel quite isolated. I think watching a horror, you're like, oh my god, this is about me. But then in this cinema it's such a fun experience to watch a horror movie yeah. with the sound and with the 
the cinematography. Definitely what you said, because we want people to go to the cinema. Uh, that's actually Sean. No. Forget, forget all, what I just rambled on about. What Sean had just said is the most important takeaway there. Yeah, yeah, well, I sure. do, because it's a fantastic movie. Oh, well, Guys, thanks, thanks, thank you. Thank you so, so much. much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you guys.